time has gone eight minutes after the hour six o'clock and it's a very good evening to you and welcome to this evening's broadcast and it's brought to you courtesy of government communication and information system the gcis alongside the department of justice and constitutional development my name is karabalans uh, by the way this is our first show for the year 2016 and hopefully you have had an awesome 2015 and looking forward uh, to the rest of this year 2016 and all blessings and all open doors for this year and may everything that you wish for and everything that you work hard for uh, just come out and turn to gold uh, we really wish that um, for you uh, this evening around we're going to be chatting uh, to the deputy minister of justice and constitutional development uh, deputy minister john jeffrey and uh, but he's not all by himself this evening really he's accompanied by chairperson of the south african human rights commission that's advocate Mabele Lawrence Mushwana and um, as well as the chairperson of the Commission for Gender Equality, Mr. Mfano Zelwe All these three gentlemen are in the studio this evening. Why? Because we're going to be talking about equality acts or the codes as such and we're looking forward to your participation on uh, this evening's show. And by the way, if you want to be in touch with us, it's all very easy. It's um, 0800 142 That's 0800 142 That line is a toll free line if you're calling from a landline otherwise if you're going to be calling us from a cell phone you're more than welcome uh, to do that and we'll take your details down and call you back as soon as we can so uh okay quality courts or quality act and okay one four two double four six or the Fisilo, Hilo, or Shumishamala Waga or Telcom, or Sarago, So there we go. So this evening we're going to be talking about, and by the way, just before I say this evening, we're going to be talking about the, um, what issues. Uh, let me just let you know that you can speak to us in any language of your choice okay so um if you speaking any of the guni languages any of the social languages if english afrikaans you're more than welcome to call in 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 those languages and uh, we'll try to help you to the best of our ability in terms of the questions that you might be having this evening we're going to be trying to create public awareness on the equality courts this evening that's one of our goals we're going to try to also highlight the successes of the equality courts since its inception um how about we we highlight the departmental efforts in promoting the equality court as well and as well uh, finally but uh, last but not least to highlight the role of the chapter 9 institutions in promoting and protecting human rights issues in South Africa so let's talk what are we waiting for let me start by um, greeting our guest this evening I'm gonna start with you deputy minister thank you so much it is the third time and I'm gonna say this again I've said this twice already, and he put a smile on his, fa- on his face as I say this. You always promise to come back, and you always do. And the last time when you walked out, you said, I'm going to come back. And I thought, that m- maybe not, because 2015 is heading towards the But here you are. Mm. Welcome, Deputy Minister. Thanks. Thanks very much. Um, it's nice to be back, and good evening to everybody listening in. It's always um, good to have you in the studio with us, DM. I really appreciate that. As well as um, um, Advocate Moswana, somebody that I'm having for the first time. Um, what a privilege, and I'm um, pretty excited to have you with us as well. Uh, well good, evening, good evening to you, sir. Good evening, and thank you for inviting us for the first time. This is an opportunity never to be missed. There we go. And uh, Chairperson of uh, the Commission for Gender Equality, I'm talking about uh, Mr. Mfano Zelwe Shozi. Mr. Shozi, you've been here as well. Uh, it looks like you guys love this place and, and uh, we must, you must call it home. Next time when you come back, you must say, I'm going home instead of going to GCIS. Welcome to you as well, sir. Well, good morning. Thank you very much for inviting us to, to be part of the show. And we'll definitely call it home. Absolutely, there we go. All right, before we waste any further time, let's get into the gist of things. We're talking about the Equality Courts or the Equality Act this evening. Um, Somebody might be hearing this for the first time. They don't know what we're talking about. And let's just break it down before we get into the deeper things uh, that are related to Equality Act. What is the Equality Act or Equality Courts, um, Deputy Minister? Look, the the starting point really is the Constitution and um, the... uh, the the 
equality clause in the constitution uh, and um, uh, basically there, there's um, legislation that needed to be uh, and the equality clause is everybody is equal before the law and has the right to equal uh, protection and benefit of the law and there was legislation that needed to be passed to give effect to that right mm -hmm. and that that legislation is the uh, promotion of equality uh, uh, and Prevention of Unde Unfair Discrimination Act. And that, that um, act basically provides that uh, where there are, if you feel that your right to equality has been violated, that you've been discriminated against, mm -hmm. uh, then you can go to an equality court. And an equality court is any high court, uh, and then... Um, certain magistrates courts but basically magistrates courts across the country have also been designated as equality courts um, it's now also being extended to the middle layer of courts the regional courts um, there was a law passed by parliament last year which came into effect last week uh, which provides that regional courts can also be equality courts and they are they are there to hear disputes where people complain that uh, their rights they've been discriminated against basically <laughs> and um Let's talk about some of the cases that are heard uh, within these courts, uh, within the equality courts. Uh, maybe you want to jump in there, um, uh, Mr. Moshwana? Uh, thank you. Uh, the, the cases that are normally brought before the equality case, are, uh, these are cases that uh, relate to equality. And, uh, of course, cases uh, that are relate to racism, which, uh, as we all know, has recently become uh, very topical and uh, because they fall under the realm of uh, hate speech. These are the cases that can be taken there. Uh, they also cases that deals with, uh, with harassment or of any net nature. And these are the cases that you can take uh, before the Equality Court. There, there was a show where we spoke about um, a type of court where people don't need legal representation um, um, earlier in, um, or just uh, the last part of 2015. And I wonder in these courts, in the equality courts, when as far as, far as legal representation is concerned, uh, does one need um, legal representation and what are the procedures that are undertaken within these courts? Yes, Mr. Mchonik. Yes, yeah. Uh, to start with, uh, you don't need a lawyer to go to the equality court. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have seen in South Africa, people do come with uh, their legal representatives, which we we do not uh, prevent them. Right. But the reason why they are equality court was precisely to make those courts uh, accessible to people who don't have the necessary resources, particularly the most vulnerable uh, grouping. So it's free, and what you need to do, for instance, it's uh, if you have harass suffered harassment, uh, a hate speech, you are free to go to any magistrate's offices, as the minister have indicated, that uh, all magistrates' court, and now the regional court, and of course uh, our high courts, our equality court, we are free to go there to approach a clerk of the court who will be there to assist you in terms of what you need to do but you do need to have sufficient information when you approach the court they will give you a form which you'll complete and sign and they will tell you how to move forward from there mm -hmm. 0800 142 446 that's 0800 142 446 we'd like to hear from you if you're listening in and if you've just joined us welcome to it uh, this is our first show of the year 2016 let's talk ju uh, justice show uh, brought to you courtesy of the department of justice and constitutional development alongside the government communication and information system my name is Karabalans. i'm glad to be in your company this evening we're chatting to deputy minister of justice and constitutional development minister uh, Deputy Minister John Jeffrey, as well as the Chairperson of the South African Human Rights Commission, Advocate um, Mabedle uh, Mushwana, as well as the Chairperson of the Commission for Gender Equality, Ubab Shows, is in the studio as well, and uh, we're happy to have them. You can engage with us via Twitter as well. Our Twitter handles never change. It's still the same as it was in 2015. At DOJCD underscore ZA, at DOJCD underscore ZA, and you can join the hashtag, let's talk, let's talk justice 
conversation on our social media as well. Facebook, the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. So get us there and we would like to hear from you. 0800 142 We're talking about the equality courts, equality courts, the promotion thereof. All right, let's say somebody has approached the courts. Um, in terms of procedures, uh, maybe you want to uh, j- jump in there, so, uh, Mr. Shozi. The procedures that one can expect in these courts, now, w- w- what are we looking at? What, in terms of, uh, is there a hearing that takes place? How, how, does, how, how, do, how does it unfold when you get to these courts? As, as a um, uh, chairperson of, of the Human Rights Commission has expected that you need to to fill in a form and um, in some other cases we'll find that the people are going to approach the, the Commission for Gender Equality or the Human Rights Commission and uh, the Human Rights Commission and the Gender Commission will assess whether this matter needs to be actually heard by the Equality Court and therefore we, we, we refer these matters to the Equality Court but we assist the complainants for example to actually take these matters to the Equality Court and therefore they have to actually fill in uh, the form from this particular court and so on. They have to actually assess whether that the matter uh, that has been brought to the court really fit uh, the jurisdiction of the equality court and therefore um, um, a, a hearing if they decide uh, the magistrate whoever decides then the, the hearing would be called um, um, some witnesses might, might, might also be called as well just to actually have an engagement around around those issues as as, as has been explained earlier on that um, uh, legal representative is not allowed uh, uh, it, it's, it's allowed but people actually are so free to actually present their own case in this particular court um, then, then, then don't need the lawyer to re- really represent you um, but sometimes um, the lawyers will actually come and actually force their way through and so on mm. and sometimes want to, to treat the quality court as a, normal, as a normal court which is because this is supposed to be an easy way of actually ex- accessing a justice and actually making sure that even the disadvantaged communities are able to actually access and actually get um, um, uh, assisted in terms of whatever they've actually complained about. So in terms of the procedures, those are some of the procedures that, that the court would need to actually follow. All right. Deputy Minister, when we started talking, you mentioned um, a, a couple of phrases that I would like to go back to, maybe just to dissect those that the listeners can actually have an understanding of what we're talking about. Uh, you spoke about unfair discrimination and hate speech. Yeah. Uh, there was a word that came out again, harassment, which I heard there. Maybe let's talk about those three quickly. And I wonder if we're talking about unfair discrimination, what what exactly are we referring to? Uh, I'd again want to go back to the Constitution, which says everyone is equal before the law and has the right to equal protection and benefit of the law. Um, uh, And that the state um, may not unfairly discriminate directly or indirectly against anyone on any one or more grounds, including race, gender, sex, pregnancy, marital status, ethnic or social origin, color, sexual orientation, age, disability, religion, conscience, belief, culture, language, and birth. And then no person, that's the state, no person, uh, this is now civil society, may unfairly discriminate directly or indirectly against anyone on one or more of the grounds um, that I listed above, mm-hmm. and national legislation, that's the the Papuda Act. However, the Constitution also does allow, uh, in terms of the unequal past that we come from, uh, that, that um, uh, the, the, the must be legislation, um, it, and the phrase is to promote the achievement of equality, legislative and other measures designed to protect or advance persons or categories of persons disadvantaged by unfair discrimination may be taken. So it is important to to realize that policies of affirmative action right. are legitimate in terms of the constitution. But it basically would be discrimination on any of those grounds that I that I have mentioned. Uh, and if you feel you've been discriminated against, mm-hmm. uh, that's the unfair discrimination aspect. Um, then you can um, you can approach the equality court. Right. So you are some of the cases um, from a gender, or, I mean a sexual orientation point of view. Um, you're a gay couple, and you 
are refused access to a guest house because they don't like a gay p- or they don't they, they say they're Christian and they don't want gay people there mm-hmm. that matter can be taken to the equality court um, you feel you're being discriminated against on the basis of gender because you're a woman uh, that can go there you feel you're being discriminated against on the basis of race the same thing obviously you've got to show that that, that that's that's proof. the real basis right. so that's basically the unfair discrimination um the the hate speech aspect uh is 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 defined in the act and it it's basically um just getting the the section but if if my uh, colleagues in the studio uh, are more <laughs> familiar um Maybe, maybe as, yeah. you, as, you, as you're trying to gather that, um, DM, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's take a caller quickly um, from Pretoria, and that's his Anonymous calling all the way from Pretoria. Good evening to you, Anonymous. Anonymous from Pretoria, good evening to you. Hi, how are you? I'm very well and yourself. I'm very well, thank you. Hello to your guest as well. Thank you so much uh, for calling in. Um, quick question. Um, I just want to ask here, um, I'm going to divert a little bit. Uh, but I felt that I was discriminated uh, because of a criminal record that I have, um, which was um, due to a content of contempt of court, the fact that I didn't attend court when I was supposed to. Um, so I got a job with one of the government departments, but I was later told that um, I can't have the job anymore because I had that criminal record. I just want to find out if um, could that be part of being discriminated or what? All right, we're going to hear from that. Thank you so much for calling in, Anonymous. Uh, we'd really appreciate your call. All right, 0800-142-446. Oh, I beg your pardon, 0800-142-446. That's the one. Are we going to take one more caller? Okay, it looks like we're going to take one more caller. We do have a call on the line. It's a very good evening to you, caller. Um, what is your name? Where are you calling from? Babong yeah. Baba ni pulete local enva weto. Okay. Azangi pume. So since from then, my genesis pega 2018, bangi zama operation ya itu azangi baki pi pulete ni olam la local itu la sakodi. I can't receive grant. Ang sakwa zina ang seven zengo private la ifinya ma. Ukumiyum seven zenga wenza. Ang sakwa zgon tabantu ang sakwa zgenza ni. I've been running up to Sasa day and night from 2010. Okay. So, Uncle is it that your problem is it coming from the fact that you're applying perhaps for jobs and now are told, are we told, Mr. Baines, of uh, because of your, your state of health? I can't drive anymore. Yeah, but is my, it is my it? My leg is no more. I'll was go over. I'll say this. My toes are not working. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll say this the total. So, Kona, but what I'm asking, Oguti, is it you that's taken that decision, Oguti? You know what? You're having a bit of a problem, so therefore you can't work. Or is it that you're applying for jobs and you are getting told that no, we can't give you snags, Kona Gugu Palemi Sebe is Goba of the state of your health. I've been applying to Sasa only. Okay. I'll tell you what, I think that will fall under the Department of Social Development. Or maybe, would you like to jump in? Just, just hold on for me, uh, Bongani. I think Bob Mushwana would like to jump in maybe there and say something to you. Bob Mushwana? Yes. Uh, I, I think if you are completely uh, disabled, uh, as uh, you are correctly pointing out, that the Department of Social Development will be the right to be approached. I think you can go and make an application for a disability grant and they will make an assessment. And if I may check, when you got injured, were you, it was it during uh, your employment, uh, course and scope of your employment? I was working as an arm guard during that time, 1992. Or you were working for somebody? 
you were yes. injured uh, while while on duty. I was working as an AMCAD in 1992 at Trico Security Company. And did they pay you for the workman's compensation? They paid, they paid me for the workman's compensation. And that was not enough. Uh. In, in fact, the, the problem went when uh, during 2008. Yeah, I, I think it will still be better to approach the Department of Social uh, Welfare mm -hmm. to make an application, and then uh, if you have any challenge, I mean, uh, we we you can approach any of our offices in the way we are in the provinces, mm -hmm. and then just to assist you to 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 access the Department of Social Development. Babongana, I think what's best can because I be to approach you because we have been since from 2010 to those offices, disability, what 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 they can't help me. That is why I'm I'm, I'm 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 approaching you. Okay. Babongani, let's do this, ne? and and we're definitely going to try and help you there. We have had people from the Department of Social Development visiting us um, in the past in this show. We do have their contact details. Now, you've been going there for yourself and you're not getting any luck. What we are going to do, we are going to call the department from our side. We'll try to get somebody to call you and have a one-on-one -on -one with you so you can actually just uh, dissect your problems with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And maybe this time around... I never... I need that help. Yeah, I think that will be the best, Bongani, because if you're going, not, not that because we're calling them, they will act. Uh, I don't know what the background is, but I think yeah, once yeah. we once we alert them that you've been trying for, for, for a couple of times and you're not having luck, uh, you know, the situation will be dealt with, actually. Thank you, sir, Karawo. Thank you so much, Bongani, from Soweto Thank calling you. in. I really appreciate it. Let's go to the Palale. The last time I was in the Palale, it was like 45 degrees, you know. <laughs> And uh, uh, my bottle of water, it felt like it was coming from a hot, a hot tub. A, a breezer from Lepalale. Breezer Lepalale? Okay, breezer's not there. All right, we kept breezer holding on for a bit too long, and he hung up. I apologize for that, breezer. If you can call in, or we'll try to call you back. 0800 142 That's 0800 142 This is the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development show called Live Your Rights. Let's talk justice, and it's the first one for this uh, for this year, 2016. DM, you are trying to gather some information uh, when it comes to the issue of uh, hate speech. Hate speech. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes, just. Uh, section 10 of the Act, um, uh, you know, there were the, those prohibited grounds that I mentioned, and the requirements is that, uh, well, the, the section is no person may publish, propagate, advocate, or communicate words based on one or more of the prohibited grounds uh, that I mentioned those earlier against any person that could reasonably con be construed to demonstrate a clear intention to uh, A, be hurtful, uh, B, be harmful or incite harm. Uh, C promote or propagate hatred. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's 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 what would make up hate speech in mm -hmm. terms of of that <coughs> act. We've seen quite a number of uh, incidents ha happening recently, DM, um, um, with the issues that we've been having. Um, has any of those uh, matters were they dealt with, you know, by the Equality Courts? Uh, look, I think the the um, the chairpersons of the two commissions can can maybe speak about um, specific cases that they may know they may be aware of. Um, I understand that the I think somebody did take the matter the Penny Sparrow matter up um, with an equality court, but I I speak under correction. But um, just in terms of the statistics that I I've got, uh, the bulk of um, the the uh, the bulk of the type of equality court matters. Uh, Forty six percent of the cases last year that were registered were unfair discrimination, and thirty six percent related to hate speech. Right. Okay. It looks like we've got Breeza back on the line. Let's take Breeza quickly from Nepalale. Good evening to you, Breeza. Um, apologize for having kept you holding for a bit too long. Good evening to you. Good evening, Karawa. How are you? I'm very well in yourself, my brother. I'm all right, man. I have a two questions. Why, Honali, the cross of building at the Tilly level of Langas on Akapo National, as a national spokesperson, then Nayan Monsou, 
iba hore di lo tse o le di bolelang tseo a re tse gore di a dire ha or whatever ka re mo rena mo magaeng mo like boa bo tsile ka re mo le phala le ha di dire di lo tse or no you can go to court and then wa bolela ka 123 and all this di lo tse ha di dire so re tse re di dire yang bo tsa that minister a re bo tse or ne what to do and then rekono u izurno re tsentse re dirang ka re le bolela di lo se di alright but ke tsa molao ta constitutional of south africa but ya no so this thing are not happening in our rural areas you see because the rural lady magistrate court a lot of them plenty of them mo di rural areas and are many corruption you see that happens here what i mean there is people who are they are against the mayor people are against me people are against whatever you see then so what to do about those things and then we are trying to to claim the locality like utswana rena le ka mo le phala le rena le extension for ya marapo ngilikishin tala una le motho ra la tsela motho ntuntu e mama ha e o tsoko fetse tsala claim awro ena o nye se motho o motho o bidiwa se bonjila ha tsala ke le bolela ka yona still tantsi ntse re e ne tsala re dire le dilo tse sa ba re ke di eviction letter or batamo dire la di eviction letter still we are still waiting and then we pay the lawyer we will do it and then you know so what to do about this because mama ha e ano o ra ha to tlo go fala bo la ke pelo ya re ngwana ha e ngwana ha ke ke se bonjile then o tlo go fetse then ma ha ke nka ba nka ba di bezo then ke doris then you know there is any little of there then you can let her to run job to mind to 10 months then you know what to do what to do as okay. a national force person all right now the minister i need the answer you know? okay No he's listening he's definitely listening and I will I will just uh, I will just translate your your matter to him uh, but thank you is that is that the only qu- you you said you've got two that was the one what's the other p- question that you have yeah, yeah, the, 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 the second the second one is is uh, the law the coding uh, uh, according how uh, how the minister explain or mola o bereka yang then abo mo rural ya rena mo au 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 bereke swi ka tsela ntseng ya lo bereke ka rkoena ka ra bo rkoena manna wa wa understand ne so what to do about that you see okay well thank you so much please i really appreciate your call and uh, we'll definitely uh, try to vet your question and see how we can help you thank you so much for that breeze calling all the way from lepalale uh, let's go all the way to cape town um, let's Thanks. speak to mhleli mhleli okay. in cape town good evening to mhleli all right mhleli okay let's try to see if we've got mhleli on the line good evening to mhleli molentele molentele sepilo ndanda ta or i don't that one kolo bulo nandi ko ka itsala pe khail sa court ne from 2010 2011 2012 for 3 years mchuti sa online ukphakama athi akaze for act for uchata namhlanje uma ke abuza what's the next date be ipale next date le libe igotha ke le ngeli qashi le libe lifuna ukphatha le for just land le e question le kona tshe mokhonja pe court ke ya record of everything ngaba abantu ababa chunga yo bon ba do they work right or not aba ibon land enza ka yo fa because apha apha ko khothe zabantu bamnyama ikhoni problem ekhoya apho khona nothi abantu bakuthi baya cha ukuthi ndane baya wena ifu wena uya le lawyer ufonse ukuthi ityala lithatha i long long term end ibhadala imali okanye ndo fika kuma 10000 ibhadala nani into ende oko ke case postpone 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 for almost a year then ndapha ngini last time the conductor of ministry chief khathe be on air all shobula le landi dambuzi ba umuntu bekwazi nawo ityala lithatha kosha ngana nikosi ndange ngaka bekwa ityala for almost one and a half year nangu ku question nam phane khothe chama kutsa ukuthi nje ya record wa inga aba akekho umuntu uyi supervisor ujongayo umuntu kala nomnika onokubile usikole no principal onayo umhlolo ujongayo umuntu akuba ngaba u principal usijekile umsebenzi wetishara kahle akhonde kuphela kanye na phaye court kwenza kandeni kwaye kusenza kwala hlawu enkosi ze sabulela tatu mhleli from Cape Town sivuyile from Phoenix good evening to you sivuyile Phoenix Okay, we've lost Zivuile, babe. All right, let's move on with our questions. And Breeza came in a bit too strong there. A little bit strong there, Breeza. Quite concerned about um, what is happening in the rural areas. I think the one aspect that he spoke about, Breeza, was the aspect of uh, exposure to information or education as far as, um, I beg your pardon, the law is concerned, especially in the rural areas. Maybe let's start there. Let's let's start by asking the question that what is the department doing as far as t- 
teaching those who are living in far-fetched areas like rural areas for instance where breeze is coming from Kole Palad and, and areas like that what is the department doing DM in terms of um, just bringing people up to speed and educating them about about the Constitution of South Africa there's there's quite an extensive uh, constitutional education program um, which we're involved in and uh, we're working with other government departments, um, with the other chap, with the chapter nines, um, particularly the Human Rights Commission, and with civil society. So um, there is quite an extensive program. Uh, obviously, these uh, these radio programs are, are one part of that, uh, but um, one one can always do more. <laughs> And uh, he was quite worried about the issue of the application of the law depending on who you are. I, I, I suspect that he's speaking about um, a situation where it looks like you have to be somebody in the community to be heard. Uh, when you are in the lower spheres in the community, chances of the law um, you know, fighting for you is, is almost non-existent. I think he was referring to that whole thing that when people talk, they talk about if you don't have money, or if you're not known, uh, no one will hear you, or the law is not going to come, or justice is not going to be um, effective in your in your life. Um, um, w- w- with that type of with that type of thing, how could you respond to that, uh, DM? Well, it's the same law that applies to everybody, and if you look at some of the cases, it doesn't matter if uh, how important you are in society, uh, your everybody is subject to the law. Uh, with the equality courts, um, as, as Chairperson Mushwana had said, you don't need a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Um, you can be, be assisted without a lawyer. Uh, so um, I think that that perception needs to be, to be tackled. Uh, everybody is equal before the law. If you bring a case uh, before an equality court, um, it doesn't matter who you're bringing that case against. Uh, mm-hmm. That case should be dealt with. All right. Uh, you wanted to find out you want to jump in there <coughs> yes uh, may, maybe it will also touch a little bit on Mseli uh, I just wanted to add to what uh, the deputy minister has said uh, in respect of uh, saying you know, the courts you know, uh, do not finalize cases in time much as, uh, as chapter 9 institutions we don't have uh, the jurisdiction or the power to, to deal with court matters, but if there are reasons to believe that there is a deliberate delay in finalizing the case, mm-hmm. then such an individual like the the, 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 the caller from Le Palale and the caller from Kayalishe, where they see that there is indeed a delay, nothing stops them from going to the to, to, to the public protector or go to the Human Rights Commission, particularly if they suspect there is corruption, like right. what is saying uh, the, the, the caller from Kyalish. They can approach the public protector to say, look, my case has been postponed so many times. As we know, justice delayed is justice denied. Mm-hmm. So on that basis, they will be able to intervene and assist. And finally... Both the Gender Commission and our commission, we do have outreach officials in, in each of our offices in the provinces who go out to also teach people about the work we are doing, how to approach ourselves. But it's good to know that Lipalale has such a problem. I know we've done a lot of work around Lipalale, but if there is this matter, then we'll welcome if we can report it. All right. Um, uh, Babchozi, would you like to jump in as well? No, no, I, I just wanted to emphasize the point, and I think they've made a point about um, having outreach uh, officers in the rural areas where we educate uh, communities around the number of issues. For example, the people that uh, 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 Section 8 of the Act uh, deals with the, pro- the prohibition of unfettered on the grounds of gender. So they, they actually dissect that to include gender-based violence, female to tell, mutilation, mm. issues of property, inheritance, and so on. Right. So if communities have problems, or more especially women, have problems around those issues, and they don't have money to go to the higher court, they can still refer these matters to the Equality Court, so that the Equality Court could deal with, with these issues. And, and they can also refer those issues to us if they need assistance to the Commission for Gender Equality, to the Human Rights Commission, to assist them with this. For example, Mpumalanga, a province, is mm. one province where 
the issues of estates are really, really problematic in KZN, Limpombo, and, and the Eastern Cape. Yeah. So, so it, 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 for, for example, more women, they go to court and they don't have money to actually pay lawyers. And therefore, that's a one avenue that they can use to, as, to, to actually assist them to actually uh, get what, what they're actually uh, looking for. So the, this, this act is actually user-friendly to disadvantaged communities. Thomas on seventeen just before uh, seven o'clock. Uh, DM, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that issue of uh, contempt of court. Yeah, yeah. Can I just ask though on 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 the matter we've dis been discussing? I I'm, I think it was from Breeza and um, Sleli, um but uh, hopefully um, the the, uh, the the backup staff got their numbers. But I would like to know. Uh, the detail of the specific, if there are specific cases that they're complaining about that took too long, mm -hmm. I'd like to know the details so we can follow up and find out what, what had happened. Okay, Breeza, be on standby. You're going to be you're going to be getting a call from the minister's office. Uh, more details are needed on those two issues that you were uh, talking about. We'd like to get into detail about them and uh, just to see how we can actually resolve that. So be on standby, Breeza. You will be receiving a call from our offices here. All right, we're going to be talking about that issue where a lady called in, um, anonymous called in, spoke about being discriminated against because of a criminal record, contempt of court. We'll touch on that one just now shortly. I'll tell you why because I would like to take civil from Phoenix just before um, of Sivuila go. Uh, Sivuila, Phoenix, good evening to you. Yes, good evening. Uh, how are you, sir? I'm very well in yourself. What is your question, sir? Yeah, I would like to wish to know that uh, around here in Phoenix and Otongati, we've got a huge problem between the blacks and Indians, which are discriminating, especially when we own the job industry and all. They used to pay an inequality, so which that is not correct because we the equality I think it is falling under the human rights. But now I'd like to know what is the solubility between those two issues because we we all facing with that problem as a uh, black people. Thank you so much, Zivuile Phoenix. I really appreciate it. Let's go to Mutratupa. Mutratupa, good evening to you. Mutratupa. Yeah, Hey, put our ring. If you enter the Gislegging, the uh, thank you so much there, Mokratupa. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your questions as well as Sylvie. All right, we'll go to those two callers quickly. Let's deal with this one. I'm sure Anonymous is waiting to hear a response on the one that's got to deal with her discrimination. She says she says she's been discriminated against because of the criminal record that she has. And I'm glad that she gave us a bit of a background in terms of what, what happened there. Apparently, um, she had to appear in court. She didn't, which is contempt of court. She applies for a job. She gets the job. Um, but... In the process of the appointment, she gets told that she cannot secure that post yeah. because she's got a criminal record. Um, when they look back, they, they find that or they found that um, uh, she was in contempt of court. Could that be discrimination? Maybe let's start there. Look, it's it's an interesting point. Um, but remember that the restriction is not against discrimination. It is specifically against unfair discrimination. So the question is, is it unfair uh, to and it's not just the state; it's also the private sector to um, not give jobs to people if they have criminal records. Uh, that's that's really the question to be looked at. Um, I don't know how long she, how long ago she had this conviction, uh, but if ten years have passed um, w for minor offences where you weren't sent to jail without the option of a fine and the fine wasn't too high, you can get the record expunged after 10 years have passed. Uh, five years if you were a child uh, under 18 when you were 
when you committed the offence or were convicted. Uh, so th that's 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 an option, um, but it it's an interesting question. I mean, it's something that. Uh, um, anonymous may want to take up with the Human Rights Commission. Um, just also to specify that both the Human Rights Commission and the Gender Commission mm. are there to uh, are, are required to assist people with equality matters. So, uh, to um, uh, who was phoning from uh, Sivuyile from from uh, Phoenix? Phoenix yeah. um, if there's racial discrimination, they should go to an equality court, but they may want to. Uh, go for assistance to the to particularly the Human Rights Commission, who have an office in Durban, uh, um, for assistance with the matter. But yeah, it's 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 I, I I currently I think the state and other employees obviously feel that that uh, people who have criminal records shouldn't be employed uh, in in certain jobs. I don't think it's all. Um, the question is is that unfair discrimination, and that's something that that an that anonymous may want to take take further and i would suggest she goes to the human rights commission if if she wants them to assist. On that. well mr mishana what, what is your take on that uh, what's your response on that better yeah I, I think we'll respond better when we know the details of this matter because then you'll be able to make an assessment in terms of when did it happen how old that person was and how serious we already know that it is not necessarily such a serious matter but uh, I think it would be better if uh, uh, we, you give them uh, our number so that okay. they can give us uh, more details uh, in terms of what transpires. In terms of what transpires, so that we can get more detail, give an advice or whether or not to go for somebody to assist her mm -hmm. to have that criminal record expunged if there is that possibility. We'll definitely do that. Let's take Lindy. We're calling all the way from Inanda. Lindy, we. Yeah, well. Good chances. Yeah, yeah. Can you speak a little bit louder for me? Angoza says Okay. 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 Okay, we'll definitely do that. Sis Lindy, we've got your numbers. I suspected that's it's one that we. Uh, I just had a feeling that we shouldn't take that one on air, really. Uh, Sis Lindy, don't worry. We'll we'll give you a call and we'll we'll talk about it off air. Thank you so much for that. Oh eight hundred one four two double four six. Ten minutes just before uh, the hour seven o'clock, and you're listening to a live broadcast coming to you live from our studios here in Hatfield in Pretoria. If you want to be in touch with us, uh, that telephone number is going to be quite handy. Oh eight hundred one four two double four six. Facebook. Facebook and Twitter, you're more than welcome. Facebook, it is the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. And uh, on Twitter, we at DOJCD underscore ZA, um, going American there for a bit, you know, with a ZA. Um, no, DOJCD underscore ZA. Gabona, and that issues, you will you would like to uh, say something quickly there? No, there was an issue raised by uh, Sivuile from Tonga around the issue of um, discrimination between uh, blacks and Indians, or African and Indians. And I think. Uh, as much as we need to take these matters to the gender commission, the equality court, the human rights commission, mm -hmm. but I think there's a bigger debate that needs to happen in communities mm -hmm. around issues of social cohesion and different stakeholders, the churches, the community organizations need to take part in terms of ensuring that there's integration in that particular level. And I think it's something that, and I think maybe as organizations, not only government, but civil society organizations and community structures needs to actually deal with these matters on the ground so that at least we assist government, we assist uh, the communities to actually deal with these uh, particular issues. But I don't think that all the legislation only assists us if we take these matters to equality court. Mm -hmm. We must also be able to deal with these issues at the community level, educate one another, and make sure that we are able to actually deal with our own issues. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to, 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 to Phoenix, um, Africans and, and Indians, they live side by side, and, and, and Chaswet and so on. So it's important for, for these communities to come together. There's even a bridge city there where the, the government is trying to Reach the two communities so that they can be able to actually dialogue and talk about some of these issues. And I think it's also important employers as well must also uh, deal with the issues of discrimination or uh, uh, around this particular so that, that 
able to actually employ people from different races and so on. So that at least we are not actually fueling um, some of these uh, things that are actually seeing in the communities. All right, but when it comes to issue of equal job, uh, I, I mean equal pay for equal jobs, what Sivuila has actually explained to us does that constitute as uh, discrimination in, in in any sort? It, it, it does. It, it definitely does. It's, it's unfair discrimination. And it, it, it sometimes happens on, on women who are also underpaid. Right. And they're doing the same work as men. As, and, and also happen across races as well. It, it really does. And mm. that's why and that's what we've been struggling for to ensure that Africans and whites and everybody who are doing the same job must also be paid the same. Therefore, mm. it, it, it amounts to unfair discrimination. All right. Uh, Mushratu, I'm coming to your question, really. Uh, I've just got a couple of listeners that I don't want them to be holding on for a bit too long there. Let's go to Lydia from Mahike. Lydia? Lydia Mafiking? Yeah, how are you? I'm good at you, Lydia. Put how are you? Yes, I'm happy happy new year. I'm um, uh, happy new year. Yes. Yeah, I'm happy new year. 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 I'm happy new uh, everything like mon fati mon yana ka sheba ke re counter by like se re sibetsa ka our constitution ya 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 South Africa so what is happening like in terms of ya wena re bo re mo department of this of justice era in terms so what is happening is abuta ka because of a like se bile gore our constitution na go ya ka nna ke ne tla ka South Africa why our reason is because it's, it's, it's too much based on religion on you know, and then highly based on religion and then of course not not in spiritual because people can see all those things that happen in happen more South Africa they are, they are, they are, they are too much physical really based on uh, we need even spiritually and then how can she ever know uh, uh, religion is like the religion thing most of Africa more we are so many uh, 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 barking Russians so if you are so many Americans, uh, uh, so what uh, I is like, okay, our country, but there is, we must be wise, more South Africa, like, South Africa from Khan. So because now, because everything, we must be one. Our oneness is killing us. Not to say, our one, our oneness is killing us. Why I'm still like that? Because now, but I did, but I did, 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 uh, to put forward to us. Thank you so much for 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 your call. I am I, I have actually compressed your question, and I will ask it to to the gentleman in the studio. But let's go to Anonymous in Johannesburg. There, I'm just trying to rush time, gentlemen. Anonymous in Joburg. Good evening to you, Anonymous. Okay, Saint Louis. Anonymous in Joburg. Let me try one more time. Anonymous in Joburg. Anonymous. Okay, I get okay, same yeg, same yeg. Okay, maybe let me let let, let me work backwards quickly. Uh, Lydia <coughs> I think Lydia's question, if I want to compress it nicely and maybe just you know, you know, just to help her to to make it short. Let, let let's maybe ask this. The spiritual institutions roles, their role in terms of um, social cohesion as a department how is the relationship there? Are we working with any of these spiritual institutions in terms of making sure that um, you know there is social cohesion in in South Africa? Uh, I don't. I'm not aware of specific programs with the Department of Justice. There are programs with with other sections of government. So uh, religious organisations are extremely involved in uh, the moral regeneration movement. Uh, social cohesion is mainly the responsibility of the Department <coughs> of Arts and Culture, so uh, there may be work being done uh, being done there. But definitely, uh, religious organisations have a very important role uh, to play with regard to social cohesion. Mm -hmm. All right, and um, let's go to Motratu. I wanted to find out uh, his problem is, uh, you know, he he explains that. A, a couple living together let me put it that way one is insulting the other calling them names and um, and, and 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 so forth um, 
he wants to know if this matter can can number one can this matter be taken to the equality court number one number two if 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 the perpetrator could be found guilty what would some of the uh, <coughs> sentences be you know what could the resolution be in 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 a case like that where somebody has insulted the other one and called them names and they found guilty of having done that maybe uh, you can explain that about mushwan uh, thank you i i, I think uh you, you need more detail. We cannot uh, predetermine what the sentence is going to be <clears throat> without knowing exactly what, uh, what, what is the insult, what did they say. Uh, but it's a matter which if he's dis- uh, he feels discomfortable around it, he can take that matter to us as a human rights commission where we'll make an assessment whether or not it's a matter that can be taken to court because it falls within... <clears throat> Harassment, as we have indicated, that uh, those are the classification, or it's it's hurtful to them. So we need more details to, in order to make an assessment, and then we'll be able to tell him whether or not the matter can be taken to court, and what are the possible uh, uh, sanctions that may follow. Right. Oh eight hundred one four two double four six. That's oh eight hundred one four two double four six. If you want to be uh, if you want to be in touch with us here in the studio, we will be taking your calls. I think we've got about six minutes to go uh, before we say goodbye. And maybe before we do that, coming from the um, gender equality's point of view, and this is where I would like Mr. Shorzy to jump in there. Issues of harassment. Maybe let's just explain what harassment is uh, before we actually even jump into some of the issues that are relating to that. Uh, Mr. Shozi, when we're talking about harassment, exactly what are we talking about? It, it, it depends. Uh, we have different types of harassment. The sexual harassment. Um, sometimes uh, we'll find what people call stalking. So there's different types of, of, of harassment. But most of the cases that, 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 we, that we actually, even that harassment is not, um, that is not sexual, uh, sometimes even in terms of this act as well, you'll find that there's even harassment in relation to the information that you use. And sometimes it's harassment in terms of you send pictures to people and so on. So there's a variety and <coughs> types of, of, actual, of, 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 of harassment. But most of the cases that you deal with at the Gender Commission, for example, are cases that relate to uh, sexual harassment. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 we take those to to, to, to to the equality court and sometimes it's severe we also take them to the main to the main courts mm-hmm. so uh, what is what is also critical as well is that uh, issues of harassment as well as sexual harassment the CCMA has also been given powers as well to deal with some of those issues that relate to the, the labor issues that happen outside the labor issues as the general commission will also deal with those but also the, uh, the, 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 the the listeners at home they could also uh, take those issues to the general commission to the to the to the uh, equality court for those issues to be actually dealt with at that particular level right let's go to Dom Futi from Mutu. Don Futu, you are our last caller uh, this evening. Uh, let's hear from you. Good evening to you, Don Futu. Yeah, I am a Yes, I am a woman. I am a woman. I am a woman. I am a woman. I Bagi bakaza la wangu yangu bicho lenzo. Amazani bakaza na chuma kwa ukwa ba uyapula zeli ukuba zeli le ba chingeza bicho lena. Okay na okay that okay all right. Okay sisi tumfuti and kalo zola le msaada zeli si si pendo lulumbuzo wa kwenye. Okay. All right. Okay, that's that, that there's another one. They um th- this lady is complaining that she's applied for a house but because of a disability that she's living with, uh, she's been told that uh, she cannot get a house. Uh, that that's what she's telling us. That shows it. No, I think section 8 of of the of people there as well. I think it's important we need to actually establish uh, the facts as well. But uh, nobody's actually allowed to discriminate on the basis of disability and that's on the basis of gender. And Section 8, Subsection H indicates that uh, women and everybody is actually expected to actually access services. And I think um, the, the caller 
could actually go to the Human Rights Commission or the Gender Commission and see whether we can assist in relation to, to people. With that. But we can't say uh, because we don't know all the facts. But I think the two institutions could work together in terms of trying to actually find out exactly what actually happened in relation to that particular issue. Because if it's on the basis of disability or on the basis of gender, and the two institutions could actually deal that particular issue. And, and I hope our courts are going to assist us to actually follow up on this particular matter. Okay. But then in the area that she's calling from, in Moto, is there a particular place that you can refer her to? I think we'll call these offices and they can, they can call her back and we f can find a way of actually making sure that the complaint is lodged with the two offices. But that's definitely um, unfair discrimination, right? On, on, the, on, the, on, face the, of of, on the face, on the face of, of it, it is really a, a case of, 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 of discrimination. Right. Okay, there we go. All right, it's got three minutes after 7 o'clock. I think we're going to wrap it up. But before I do that, there's been a question that I've been hanging for quite a bit. Um, in fact, I've just mentioned it now. We're talking about unfair discrimination. And maybe I was just wondering, and maybe you're wondering as well, that when we're saying unfair discrimination... Is there any other form of discrimination that is allowed? Because um, you know, when I was when I was reading up on this, uh, um, it was saying that it is important to know that the act does not prohibit discrimination, but unfair discrimination. Uh, do you want to maybe just dissect that for us, uh, the DM? Um, if <coughs> you restrict, uh, if you're applying for a job, or if you're advertising a job. And you say that people who um, don't have a particular level of qualification or a particular number of years experiences, experience cannot apply for that job. That's discrimination, but I would argue it's not unfair. Okay, you, okay. You, you, it's a particular kind of job. You want people with particular skills, so you can impose, impose that. So, um, yes, there's lots of discrimination. Um, you may say um, that uh, a person over a particular age um, at a gym, um, or let's say, no, let me put it this way, a person at a gym uh, under, the, under a particular age can't make use of equip certain equipment because maybe they're a child and they're not, uh, their body's not sufficiently developed. Mm -hmm. That's discrimination. That's not unfair. Mm -hmm. uh, unfair is, is so, so there's lots of discrimination where we say that um, people that are older, people that are younger, um, even people that are disabled uh, can't get particular jobs. Uh, um, in, in the case of disabled, I mean, if you were, let's just say, if you were a manual worker, um, uh, particularly using your, your limbs, and you don't have all those limbs or they're not in, in, in all in good working order, then it may be correct to say uh, that, that um, a person, uh, you know, can't, can't apply for that job. So unfair is where it's, it's not fair. Uh, it's not a fair discrimination. Mm -hmm. So uh, somebody from a racial perspective, um, the, one, of the, one of the callers mentioned, everybody should get paid the same for the same amount of work done regardless particularly in the two areas of discrimination uh, regardless of their race regardless of their gender mm -hmm. uh, if if a man gets paid more for the same work that a woman is doing that's unfair right all right, there we go. And that's how we wrap it up for this evening, uh, bringing us uh, to exactly six minutes after the hour, seven o'clock. Um, thank you so much for having listened in on th this first show of 2016. Let's talk justice, live your rights, courtesy of the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. Let me say thank you so much to Deputy Minister of Justice and Constitutional Development, uh, Deputy Minister John Jeffrey. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks very much for having me. Chairperson of the South African Human Rights Commission, Advocate Mabele Lawrence Moshwana. Let me say thank you to you as well, sir. Thank you very much for calling us uh, once again. And uh, last but not least, the Chairperson of the Commission for Gender Equality, Mr. Mfano Zele Shosi. Thank you so much, sir, for coming in. That's the best way to end it. Um, all right, there we go. That's not unfair discrimination, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, uh, that's how we wrap it up for myself, Karabalans. Let me say thank you so much for having listened through. Thank you to all the radio stations uh, who've partnered with us this evening. Let's meet again next week, shall we? Next week, Thursday, is going to be our third last broadcast of, uh, and I can see my social media producer is not, when I say this, she's not happy. Uh, we'll talk. Maybe we might add another five or six of these programs. Who knows? But let's meet again next week, Thursday, on Let's Talk Justice.
live your rights. From myself, Karabolans, Storana Saba Pedil Matebele, Gratagore Evalibushu, Yobobozi.